You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Life cycle is a series of stages through which an individual, culture, or manufactured product passes through within its lifetime. Welcome to the Life Cycle Radio Show with your host, Pastor Ken Jones. Ken is here to help you through trauma, self care, being overwhelmed, and coping with your life cycle issues. So now, please welcome the host of Life Cycle, Pastor Kenneth Jones. Coming to you live on the BBM Network and Tune In Radio, this is Life Cycle, and I'm your host, Pastor Ken Jones, and I look forward to connecting with you and sharing with you as we talk about those things that will impact your total well-being, spirit, soul, and body. You know, last week we started talking about anger, and we were talking about it initially at a cultural, environmental, uh, national level. And this week, uh, I want to I want to kind of get into a more relational aspect of uh, anger and you know anger management and anger that in a, within relationships. And so I have Dr. Tracy Dennis back with me again. Uh, Dr. Dennis uh, was a, have a master's in conflict management and bachelor in, in uh, human resources and PhD in organizational leadership. Uh, and she currently works at the county executive of Prince George County. Uh, and she's been mad for 29 years. Uh, you know, I don't know if she ever got angry during those 29 years, but um, maybe she might tell us. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, good evening, Dr. Dennis. Good to have you on. Thank you for having me. Well, you, you know, yes, last... I've had many opportunities to get angry in my 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, the Bible says, you know, the seeds from anger in Psalm 37, you know, and we see different types of anger, you know, it's passive anger, uh, chronic anger, being overwhelmed or self-inflicting or even judgmental anger. anger. But um, I want to talk a little bit more about anger, especially within the family and uh, in relationship. And, you know, uh, I know we just had a situation this past weekend when we, when we heard about Kirk Franklin and his son, I guess, got into a heated argument. And and a, lo- a lot of words were saying, and most of us know Kirk Franklin, he's a um, gospel singer, and a lot of people, you know, you know love Kirk Franklin. And, but he, he, you know, he had a situation with him and his son, and obviously uh, he got angry. And he said some things, that, and unfortunately his son recorded him. And one of the questions, uh, you know, Tracy, that was brought up is that what people say, well, he's a Christian. So so is that an expectation for Christians not to uh, become angry? Um, I think there is a expectation, but it's unrealistic um, simply because, again, even in the Bible, um, God, uh, he said it. He said, be angry. Um, so, you know, who, if, if the Lord God says be angry, then come on now. He, that was the expectation that we would get angry. Um, but, he, but he's also said be angry, but said not. So I guess that we, can, we, can, we, can, we can have the anger. Uh, and I guess it's not a lot of anger get the best of us. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Um, we shouldn't let it get the best of us, but I, but again, I think it's, um, you know, it's unrealistic that we're going to be perfect. And in the situation, and many might not agree with me, but in the situation of Kirk Franklin and his son, there's so many unknowns. But what we do know is we didn't hear what happened before the conversation. We didn't hear what happened at the end of the conversation. His son only recorded 
that part. Um, and then on top of that, you know, when you in a relationship, as we're talking about today, when it comes to relationships, there's a lot more emotion involved, um, mm-hmm. whether it be a marriage, whether it be a child and a parent, um, uh, it, it's so many different factors in a relationship and, and there are times when we lose it and I yeah. think in terms of Chuck Franklin he, he lost it mm. you know I, I know you deal a lot with conflict management and uh, as a chap as a pastor and a counselor you know I've had people here arguing and screaming in my MR and, and sometimes <laughs> they let well they just said thank you for you know giving me a place to come and to release this, you know, to release these things. And they feel so much better. And sometimes in my counseling, I just sit there and let them go back and forth for a while. Every once in a while, you know, I would bring up a question or ask a question. But but some of them actually felt good about the idea. I said, man, I'm just thank you for giving me a, a, a place to come to that that I can you can kind of manage, you know, help me manage what I want to say and even manage my anger in, a, in an environment. And I know it's conflict management. It, you you deal with people sometimes that are pretty much angry about certain things. I, you know, I deal with um, people who are angry quite a bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, whether it be dealing with conflict management situations or whether it be um, just two staff members who are not getting along and are having issues, and you hit the nail on the head, there are a lot of times people just want to get it out. They want to get it out. They want to speak their piece in a safe environment um, and be allowed an opportunity to be heard, not necessarily understood because we don't always understand, you know, the origin of why people are upset. We don't always know the origin of why we're upset. I mean, you know, feelings are not logical. They, I mean, people think feelings make sense. They don't. They change from minute to minute, hour to hour. So feelings are not logical. But being heard, logical, illogical, being heard and having an opportunity to speak your piece is what majority of the people who I have worked with look for. They're looking for an opportunity to um, speak how they feel without being challenged. And mm-hmm. I think that's the key. In terms of Kirk Franklin, again, we don't have all the details for that situation, but I've been in Kirk Franklin's place several times. <laughs> yeah, I, know you, I can understand and what I, you mean. <laughs> I mean, if you're a parent, um, if you've been married, if you've had any type of relationship with someone who you love, and it could be a friend, but if you've ever had a relationship with someone who you love or care deeply about or have some type of emotional tie to them, you mm-hmm. you can pretty much understand where Kirk Franklin was coming from. Yeah, you know, sitting here doing family counseling, family therapy. I mean, sometimes it's it's interesting because sometimes even the parents or even the children uh, are surprised when certain statements uh, come out the mouth of the you know the wife, the mother, the father, the you know husband, and even the children. They're sitting there looking and they say, "Wow, uh, I did not know. I I was unaware." And mm-hmm. you know, one of the one of the things that we, we'll probably talk about, the, you know, later on today is that one of the causes of anger is usually unresolved issues, you know, so maybe Absolutely. personal issue, social, you know, spiritual. And, and sometimes it, it just get to that point where it comes out. And I think last week we talked a little bit about anger actually being somewhat healthy rather than to uh, keep that in, but it should be a, in a way that it can be released. And, and like I said, I know through conflict management, you provide some type of parameters sometimes for people to express themselves and to, uh, you know, uh, express their disagreement or their frustration and anger. Absolutely. I um, One of the things that I like to establish initially is, um, of course, ground rule housekeeping. Um, I let everyone know that at the beginning of any conversation, I want you to know that words have power. Mm. Um, And that when you are expressing yourself in our meeting, I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. Words have power. So words like never, you always. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to be careful about the words you use. And then secondly, what have in mind how you want to resolve the issue. It's okay, okay to be angry, but without a resolution, you have to be challenging. Yeah, let's talk about that next in our next segment, uh, Mark and Dennis. Uh, I could definitely want to get some more information on that. The line is open if you'd like to call in. 
Our number here one 451 1451 I'm Pastor Ken Jones, broadcasting to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Stay tuned for more. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, and this is Life Cycle, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And I'm here with Dr. Tracy Dennis, and we've been talking about anger, uh, especially within the relationship aspect. If you have any questions and you want to call in and make a comment, our number here is 1-866-451-1451. You know, Dr. Dennis, you were talking about how words uh, words have power, and uh, I like to say also words can can ignite something as well and uh and as we try Absolutely. to deal with yeah as we try to deal with his anger uh you know part of it is you know something may be said or something may be done and then like you said before you know it uh you're off you're off to the races absolutely absolutely and that and again you know uh, early part of my marriage it was interesting because my husband was was taught to you know, if there's this elephant, pink elephant in the room, you don't say anything. You, you walk around it and pretend it doesn't exist. And uh-huh. my family, we, you know, we were extremely poor. We didn't have a lot of outside activity because of, of money. So we spent a lot of time in the house together. And we had many, many conversations. So we, we come from vastly different backgrounds. And one of our challenges early on in our marriage was... Um, communicating and having conversation. And it was interesting because when we would sit in front of a, um, a therapist, the first thing he would do is talk about things that happened five years ago. And I'm thinking, <laughs> what just happened? I thought we moved. <laughs> I mean, we didn't have so many good times in between. And he didn't went back five years. And um, I found that that was the root of some of his um, sh- being shut down, being angry, things like that, is because he never got to express himself from five years ago. So, you know, a lot of times in relationships, the ground rules have to be understood that, A, um, we're going to say things that are necessarily not going to ruin our relationship because you can say things when you're angry and you can't take them back. You know, right. you can't unring that bell once it's been said. And then um, number two, you know, my husband, I'm ready to talk about it today. We have to agree that if we choose to table the conversation, there has to be a promise that we'll come back to it. Because, again, if not, we'll be talking about what happened five years ago. Uh And then number three, um, be committed and invested in a resolution. And that's whether you are at work 
or you are um, dealing with family members, be committed and be invested. Um, mm-hmm. Those two things are so important. Be committed to a, resolu- a resolution and be invested in it. Don't just say you'll do it, but actually put the work in. Oh, wow. Well, and you're right. That's a lot. Uh, was, when you ask, as a counselor, when I ask people, have they talked about this before? Have you, you know, came to any kind of conclusions? Uh, uh, you know, how well have you communicated this? You know, whether or not you do the I versus you, or you just keep saying you, 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 you. And, um, and you're right. I mean, a lot of things we remain unresolved because people can't get past. Sometimes the words create a barrier. You know, we talk about how words have power and words, uh, you know, ignite, but also our words can create a barrier that now we can't really talk to each other. You know, you may have said something, Absolutely. you may regret, you know, and, uh, you know, as a counselor, I've seen so many people have ruined their families, careers, opportunities, uh, all in a fit of anger because they held back and they they did not say it, and they created a barrier that no one can really cross uh, because of your words, because of your anger, because of your bitterness. And we talked about this aspect that this anger also can cause mental health problems like depression, uh, uh, alcohol, drug abuse, low self-esteem, uh, abusive behavior, all these things that because people are not really properly uh, dealing you know, with their anger. Absolutely. And then, you know, when you talk about family and people properly dealing with anger, it's also generational. You know, um, as I mentioned, my husband's family, they didn't really communicate. And I, I strongly believe that anger is passed on to your children um, and the next generation and the next generation. I do believe it's a generational thing when it comes to how people deal with anger or not deal with anger. And I find that I've spoken with so many people who said, you know, why are you always angry? Well, my mom, that's, you know, she taught us that that's how you are supposed to communicate and talk with people. Or my dad, my dad came home from work and he would fling his bag down and, and, you know, the way he communicated and said hello was to be angry. So sometimes anger can be unconscious. Because people don't realize that that is an issue because that is what they're used to or what they've always seen. So, you know, they continue that cycle. And sometimes it can be a vicious cycle because, um, you know, it can get out of control where your dad may have done it. But then you may pick it up and go, well, not only am I going to be angry, but now I want to be physical and and, Mm. and things like that. So, you know, anger is good. Um, conflict is good, but it, when it's uncontrolled and unmanaged, that's when we, you know, run into situations that where it's hard to turn back, and we say things that damage relationships that should have been valued at the beginning. And that's why when you do have conversations about why you're angry, you know, I, the first thing I say, you know, to someone if we're having conflict is, I value our relationship. I want you to know mm-hmm. that up front. And so because I value it, I'm asking you right now for forgiveness because nothing that I will say is not intentionally trying to hurt you. I'm just expressing myself. You know, I try to set some a foundation or some ground rules because goal is not to destroy the relationship ultimately. But, you know, are we given those tools growing up? No, nah, not necessarily. You, you very seldom see parents. Um, I know my parents then sit us down and say, hey, let's talk about how you're supposed to deal with anger. You know, we had a life to live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, those are the gaps that um, perpetuates itself into adulthood. Well, you know, also, in, in coming up, when I was coming up, I always watched TV. I, I'm dating myself, and I don't know if you ever remember the show The Honeymooners, uh, Jackie Gleason. And he would Absolutely. always fuss. Yeah, he would fuss with Alice. He'd say, one of these days, Alice... Pow! Right in the kisser, you know, mm-hmm. and so, you know, you, you saw, so you always watch these shows and argument and yelling and screaming always seem to be part of the show, you know, and eventually, yeah. supposedly, you know, everybody resolve, you know, and act, 
Jackie Gleason grabs her and gives her a kiss, you know, and, and all these other shows, too, where you see a lot of anger. So, I, you know, I was getting to think that anger was common, but, I, I, you know, eventually I wouldn't get in the kiss afterwards. You know, I would just, you know, I may be on the couch or maybe outside somewhere else. And I said, well, why can I have that, you know, why can I have that Jackie Gleason type anger or that Florida and James type anger where they can go at each other and, it, and all within 30 minutes they're back in love again, you know, so... I was trying right. to figure out. You know, I was trying to figure out what's all that in between time that uh, that I may be missing when I'm angry or when I'm engaged in a heated conversation. You know, those are the things that I that those are the things I think about. So the Absolutely. line is open. The line is open. If you'd like to call in with a question or make a comment, our number here is one eight six six four five one one four five one. I'm Pastor Ken Jones here with uh, Dr. Dennis. Welcome to your live from the BBE Global Network and Tune In Radio. More to come, so stay tuned. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy EasySense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's EasySense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. And we're back. This is Life Cycle, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tuned In Radio. I'm Pastor Ken Jones. I'm here with Dr. Dennis. We're talking about aspects of anger and especially anger within relationship. Our number here is 1-866-451-1451 if you'd like to call in and participate. You know, Dr. Uh, Dennis, as I started thinking about anger, uh, and one of the things I found myself doing when I Started, uh, you know, when I found myself getting anger, I realized that according to Galatians chapter five, self-control is one of the fruits of is one of the fruits of the spirit. So thinking about that as a uh, you know self-control, I realized that I, when I find myself getting to that point, that I need to think about self-control in the midst of what I'm going through. And so one of the things I think about when I'm when I have anger toward a person, I had to do an internal check on my emotional state, and that's why I think sometimes people don't really do is a lot of time when they get angry. Uh, sometimes you have to ask yourself, okay, why am I angry? You know, why, you know, what is really making me angry about this situation? Uh, don't you agree? Absolutely. Um, I think the one thing that we, uh, another tool that we tend to overlook um, when we're angry is giving ourselves a break. Um, all anger doesn't have to be expressed outwardly. Um, Sometimes you just have to give yourself a break. Take a take a moment and and and, and understand that mm, now may not be the right time to address the issue because of you know how like in business they tell you when you're angry and you get ready to send an email, put it in draft. Yeah, um, I remember that. You know, so that and give yourself some time to cool off, think about, reflect, find some alternatives, determine if that's something that needs to be addressed or. If it needs to be addressed, the way I'm addressing it is it the right way. So 
yeah, um, give yourself a break for a minute and, and try to recalibrate um, because you might be angry in that moment. Going back to Kirk Franklin, I, you know, his son lives in his house, right? So I seriously doubt that this man hates his son. Um, and if, and, and during that call that he had, they were speaking with a, 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 a counselor. Um, so, of course, when you're speaking with a counselor, that's an opportunity for you to have a safe place and get everything off your chest and y'all may go at it and disagree, et cetera, and so forth, because that was the, that was the um, environment that they chose to express themselves in. So, yeah, it, you can give yourself a break and make a decision um, to wait this out and not necessarily, you know, jump off the cliff right away, but, but step back and, and have some critical consideration. Think before you speak. Calm down. Um, I laugh at my husband. I go, when he's upset, it doesn't have to be, it could be work. I go, you may need to go work out. <laughs> you know, um, release some of them endorphins and then come on back. I bet you you're not as mad as you were before. And by the time he gets back where he even took a walk or got on the elliptical, He's like, you know, it doesn't even matter anymore. I'm good. I made it a bigger deal than what it was. So, you know, all anger is not a situation that has to be addressed. It's not right. a situation where you have to, you know, have a resolution every single time. The resolution can mean calm down, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, take a breather. Right. So, well, you know, sometimes I think about one of my other things, too. I had to ask myself, really, um, and making a am I making an assumption about the intention of the person I'm dealing with? You know, there are times Absolutely. that you know, there are times that uh I'm thinking the person is thinking one thing or saying one thing and that's why, you know, text message is not always good because it doesn't always carry the emotion or intent or expression of nonverbal cues right. that sometimes we might need to see. But sometimes I have just completely misread the attention of the other person. And I may have gone off and got angry and realized the person was just only trying to um, to help me, to help, you know, to either encourage or help me see something that I I don't see. And But I may just look at what that person doing is, is attacking me. He's attacking me. And you don't want to, you don't want to see me. You don't want to see me grow. You don't want to see me get better. And I'm, I just come, I just come through with a lot of, you know, <laughs> A lot of thoughts, and the person is kind of looking at me. What are you, you know, what are you talking about? And, uh, and I think, I, I, you know, why are you laughing? <laughs> well, you know, I could, I, I hear my kids telling me that you just don't want me to have fun, or you just don't want me to live my life and do it. I can hear my kids when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because they want to do what they want to do, and when you're trying to say, they get more and more angry with me because I'm try I'm thinking I'm giving them that motherly advice, and they are resisting because they're like, "You just don't want me to be happy." No, I really do want you to be happy. I just don't <laughs> want to be responsible for the answer. So, mm. yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. You're, hey. you're definitely right. And, you know, sometimes as a husband, I know as a husband, I can always be as a husband, the wife tell you something and, you know, so why she just tell me something? She's just trying to, you know, get in on my thing. She just think I'm, she thinks I'm stupid. She thinks I'm, you know, and I have, you know, sometimes that pride definitely gets in the way and uh, not realizing that, you know, your, your spouse intent may be to help better you, to, you know. They may be going by the wrong way. That they may, and even though they may be wrong in their in their thought process, you know, they may be wrong in what they may be seeing, but give them a benefit of a doubt to say, okay, yeah, you may not, you know, honey, that's not what the, that's not what it is, but I appreciate you for looking out for me. Uh, I appreciate uh -huh. you for, you know, give me some, to give me some advice, you know, go back and say, uh, you can go back and say, Hey, you know, that's not, that's not the situation here, but I do appreciate you for looking out because once, you know, once again, uh, you know, you, you're not, thinking about the intention of the other person. You may, you may have the wrong intention. I mean, the wrong thoughts about the intention of the other person. And yeah. And you know what, too? Even with marriage, um, you know, the saying, happy wife, happy life. I, I don't know about, I'm, I'm probably the minority, <laughs> but I really don't like that saying. You know, because I do feel like um, it, it leaves the husband out of the opportunity to be happy because you know, if we're happy, then everybody should be happy. And I, 
And I've learned, you know, over 30 years that it's not always about me now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Majority yeah. of the time I'm right. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I think I, um, if you've been married uh, as long as I have, it, it's very important that everyone in a relationship is heard and everybody um, gets an opportunity to be happy. Um, is it possible to have a win-win situation? Um, yeah. You know? I agree with you. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely agree with that. And, uh, oh, uh, the line is open. You'd like to call in and with a question and make a comment. Our number here is 1 866 451 1451. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, broadcasting to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Hey, it's the conversation getting good, so please stay tuned. Author, radio show host, and coach John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals listen to john hawkins my strategy saturdays 1 p.m eastern on the bbm global network and tune in radio Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veteran spoke-style wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit, whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, and this is Life Cycle, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tuned In Radio. And today I'm here with Dr. Dennis, and we're talking about anger, especially anger in a relationship, and you know how to deal with it, how to recognize it, how to overcome it. Uh, you know, the Bible says, uh, Dr. Dennis, in Proverbs 15:1, that a gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words makes tempers flare. And I. What I'm beginning to see a lot of time, most people may not see that anger has a cycle. It's a cycle of words. It's a cycle of actions. You know, it's a cycle of uh, you know events. And I, I I used a good example once again dating myself about the War of the Roses with Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner. Mm-hmm. And you know they had this escalating war with marital assets, and because they were both wealthy. And, you know, it just kept going and going. Different things were said, different things were done. And, and it was sad that they end up, uh, I guess I'm assuming that they died because they, they fell over the stairwell. And they died. Mm-hmm. And then they, and as they died, they reached out for each other's hand, now really seeing, okay, I truly love us. I truly love you. But I got myself in yeah. this cycle, you know. I got myself in this cycle of anger. And, uh, you know, and I can't seem to get out of it. it it's that kind of how you saw the movie? Absolutely, absolutely. Because you do, you, you, um, you, it starts to become you. Um, it start to, it start to be how people recognize you. I remember years ago, um, I'm four feet eight, so everybody always said I had this Napoleon complex. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so my mom, I remember, maybe it's been maybe seven, eight years and something happened. I I can't remember the situation, but how I responded, mom said, wow. And I go, what? And she said, I'm so happy. God finally answered my prayer. I said, what are you talking about? She said, I've been praying that anger off of you. 
I have mm. been asking God to release you from that anger. And I, and I said, I've been angry? She said, Tracy, every time, every situation was a situation. Even when it shouldn't have been a situation, it was a situation. And she said, and I just felt like you were going to have a stroke or something was going to happen to you because it just seemed like every response you had to a situation was anger. And so that movie resonates with me because it was a cycle. It wasn't even the way I was raised. It was just, you know, being a child, being short, being picked on that I felt like I had to get you before you get me. Mm. So I created a cycle of that. But what I perceived was protecting myself. Other people saw it as being angry and unapproachable and unrelatable. And mm. I never saw that in me. And, and to be honest with you, no one in my immediate circle like family even wanted to approach the conversation with me because why I would get angry and I would brag about and unconsciously I did it, but I would brag about the fact that if you come for me, you gonna know you've been in a fight. Mm. And that was my claim to fame, you know? Right. So yes, I absolutely believe that you get in a cycle and unconsciously you is it, 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 normalized. Absolutely. So, you know, so you speak of Napoleonic attitude, I'm going to bring up again, you know, the, the idea of ABW, you know, angry black woman. So it, is it really a syndrome? And what is this kind of founded in? Is it based on the idea that a black woman just have to be angry and she had to defend herself? I mean, uh, you know, what is that? What is that founded in? I, you know, I think the angry black woman, and this could go really deep, but I think the angry black woman come from. You know, our eyes have seen a lot. They tell so many stories. And um, I believe that because we have been so silent or we are silent about so much, and I'm just speaking from one woman, um, there's many different perceptions out there, but I, I know for me, I, you know, you get fed up and you get tired. And then, you know, when you do respond, if it was anyone else, it would be a response. But for us, people perceive it as a reaction. And so we get fed up with that. Um, and then, we, you know, it's just it's just fed up being fed up. It seems like, you know, there's an ever evolving cycle of having to take care of the home, be a good mom, be a good wife, go into the workplace. You know, there's always these layers that we have to fight to be understood, to be recognized. And I think that, I, honestly, I think the the constant fight inside, outside, within ourselves, that we have um, given that impression or given that, that ADW life. Um, and then now this is the age of where women are in power but because that stigma and that stereotype has been there, even when we speak assertively, um, people use that, they weaponized it. So whereas before, it was, it was definitely some truth to that. But now that we are just speaking, because we, we are not just asking for a place at the table, we're demanding it. And we're demanding it in such a way that, you know, you know we're there not aggressively but assertively and now that stigma is there and people have used it to weaponize us so Mm. um i take ownership for it but at the same time you know we're not always angry we're just really telling you how we feel and and like you said a lot of you know a lot of the anger is based on a lot some things that unresolved some things that is you know that have been left dormant and you know it's like picking up a rug you know and seeing something run out of it but uh yeah i can understand your point and and like i said the bible talks about an aspect of anger but it also talks about an aspect of control and i think that's what a lot of you know we started this thing talking about that is can christian be angry i don't think the issue is so much about the anger i think the issue is about the control you know ephesians 4 26 27 says when angry do not sin do not let your wrath your fury or indignation last until the sun go down leave no room or foothold 
for the devil nor give opportunity to him. So I, I think it's not it, it, the problem is not so much of the anger I think per se, but it's the idea of, you know how we control it, how we manage that anger. So you know, being children of God, God has a righteous anger. You know, you can see something happening in your household and just make you angry, or you can see something happening within a relationship and uh, make you angry. So I think it's so much not so much the uh, anger itself, but the management of it. And we'll talk some more about that on, in our next segment. Our line is open. You'd like to call in, and make a comment. Our number here is one eight six six four five one one four five one. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, broadcasting to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Please stay. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24 year addiction to cocaine and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern. Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, and this is Life Cycle. Coming to you live in the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And today I'm talking with my host, Dr. Dennis, about anger and how to manage anger, how anger exists in relationship. If you'd like to call in, our number here is 1 866 451 1451. If you'd like to ask a question, uh, you know, to make a comment. Well, uh, you know, Dr. Deb, we talked about this aspect of anger and, and how anger can be an aspect of resolve. And one of the things that we were just saying at the close of the last segment that I don't think it's so much the anger itself, but it's the aspect of the management. I mean, God expects us as Christians and as human beings that we get, we get anger. But if that anger begins to control you or sustain anger can be damaging, you know, to you as well. So when you have excessive anger, you can put your physical well-being at risk. Uh, people dealing with high blood pressure, depression, cardiovascular issues, all these, um, you know, as a result of anger. And one other thing, too, is anger, I think, is contagious. You know, your anger can not only affect mm-hmm. you, but the people in your life. I mean, it's, it's, you, you know, you, you, you capture a lot and try to explain to people sometimes the effects of anger. Yeah, I do, I do, and our words are containers of power, and if you can look at two big containers, and when you look at what we say, there are two big containers of power, and either you're making deposits in the negative, or you're making po- deposits in the um, positive. And how we use those words um, determines uh, how we are viewed to others, how we are, um, you know, in relationships with, that we have with other people. Um, it has a lot of power. And I think that's the part that 
you know, people in general, they become careless with it because they say, you know, I'm just talking. But after you finish talking, what happens with those words? They have to go somewhere. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then people say, well, that was not an in, my, that was not in my intention. And I tell people all the time, I get that wasn't your intention, but the impact is what you're missing. So mm. intent versus impact are two big different things. And you have to get control of those words because when you don't, your intent leads to a negative impact. Yeah. You um, know, Chris... You know, you Christian know. counselors say that uh, 50% of people who come in for counseling have problems dealing with anger. And I think and most times they don't even realize it, uh, Dr. Dana. Continue. Yeah, because, too, they don't realize it because, again, they normalize it. Um, mm. Whether it was something that they saw. Um, and then, too, if you look, if you go back to a child, when a child is screaming and, and yelling and and even, you know, a newborn, what do we do? We go and find out if they want to pacify it. We go find out if they need a bottle, if they're wet, and all of that. So after we've resolved all of that, when they're screaming and yelling, and we go and we pick, and pick them up, then what does a, a young child learn to do at a very young age, even out the womb, that if I scream, yell, and holler, I'll get what I'm asking for. I'll get my way. Right. So... That child grows up with that behavior or those behaviors and those mentalities that, okay, you know, as long as I scream, yell, lay on the floor, and then what people tell you, walk away from it. Walk away, let them scream and yell because, you know, that behavior perpetuates itself into an older child. My mom used to say it all the time. She goes, you keep picking them up. That big, that, that young child that's screaming is going to turn into a big child that's screaming, and then it's not going to be so cute. And that's what happens. It, it becomes mm. a cycle. Like you said, it becomes normal. It becomes contagious where, you know, you have a child that does it all the time. Then the other siblings follow suit because they say, well, you know, Johnny got what he wanted. So I'm going to do it, too. Um, so, yeah, it becomes a cycle. I call it, to be honest with you, I call it generational curses, whether mm. it's from parent on to the child or however, is a curse that if not broken, it could be very damaging emotionally, like you mentioned, physically, mentally, it causes depression, it causes anxiety. All of those emotions, all those things are e emoted from anger. And yeah. people don't see that because they're in it, but it does have bigger consequences. Yeah, you know, the Bible talks about controlling your anger, and uh, the Bible says a lot of good things about, uh, you know, if you control your anger, you, you'll be able to uh, you exercise wisdom, because a lot of times people can't see in the midst of the heat of the uh, battle, you know, because uh, the anger is corrupting their spirit, it's corrupting their communication, it's corrupting their mindset. And so it's kind of like being, you know, I'm an old artillery guy. When you start dropping rounds on people, you can't really hardly see the battery. It just suppresses you. And so in the midst of the okay. anger sometimes, if we're not controlling or managing it, it suppresses us. We can't really see the other person's perspective. We can't uh, have an attitude of uh, where we can have peace or rest. We just keep multiplying, you know, that environment until it's all out of control. And, but God wants us to be, you know, he wants us to live in peace with all men. He wants us in our relationship to have peace in our relationship. He wants us to have joy in it. And, you know, he's given us, but you said the same words that you have so much power to tear down. Those same words, Dr. Dana, can be used to build up instead of destroy and, and lead to anger. Absolutely. It's, it's really, it really requires cognitive restructuring. You mm. have to stop for a minute and say, um, I need to change the way I'm thinking. And you mm. mentioned it earlier. You said, um, you know, about maybe what you're angry about or what you think is really happening is not really happening. That's that cognitive restructuring, changing wow. um, how you're thinking, changing the way you approach things and redirecting um, your thoughts into another direction. 
Wow. So many thoughts, so many things to think about. Uh, the line is open. If you'd like to call in a question, make a comment. Our co- number here is 1-866-451-1451. I'm Pastor Ken Jones here with Dr. Dennis. Broadcasting to you live from the BBM Global Network and tuned in radio. Uh, stay tuned for our final thoughts. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards. She is a Spirit Book of the Year Gold Medal Living Now Book Award winner. And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, and this is Life Cycle, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We have great discussion about anger and investing in the aspect of relationship. Uh, I think I have a call on the line. Uh, Chloe, do uh, you have a comment or a question? Yes, well, just a comment. It was a great show today, but I did want to make a comment because um, I'm like, I'm 35. I just saw War of Roses this summer. It just passed. That was my first time seeing it. <laughs> and I just wanted to correct, <laughs> correct y'all on something. Um, at, even at the end, when they did fall, um, Michael Douglas reached for her hand. She reached, uh, he touched her like arm or her thigh. She reached down and grabbed her hand only just to take it off of her and throw it down. So even until death, that's how angry they, uh, the embitteredness that she mm. was against. Because towards them in the movie, I was starting to think it was more her, like he wanted her back or something. But even until death, that's how anger or bitterness can get you. Like even at the very last, her last few breaths, she took, grabbed his hand to take it off of her. So I just want mm. to get yeah, that bitterness and that anger is is real and is strong and I just encourage people to pray for the peace of God because it's unhealthy. Thanks for the fact mm, check that's that, a good point. Dr. Dennis? That's a good point. Well, I tell you what, um, I want to encourage people to be careful with your words. Um, you know, when we're angry, we say things like never, always. Um, we say words that have, that are finite. And we have to be careful because it's very difficult to come back from. Um, I know that people are going to think that this is um, not a normal um, uh, clinical way of going about it. But I will tell you that it is true. Laughter. Laughter releases a lot of tension. Um, it, it It will change the trajectory of the conversation of the issue, not laughing at the issue itself, but saying, you know, is it really that serious? I would encourage people to use some tools, not hold grudges, um, stick with I statements, talk about how you feel versus um, attacking. And I think those are some things that would definitely uh, reduce 
uh, the level of anger that, you know, you may feel personally or towards someone else. Yeah, those are some good points, and you're right. You know, I versus you is one of my favorites because I find myself saying you, mm-hmm. you, you. I mean, I, I find myself going off track, and uh, I realize, okay, this is not getting me anywhere. So I had to come back to the I, you know. Just, and what, what, she, what she's saying, you're just saying, look, I feel this is what's happening. I, this is how I feel. This is what I think. And so rather than saying, you don't do this, you don't do that, Remember, like uh, Dr. Dennis said, your words have power. They can create, they can build, they can tear down, they can destroy. And so we think about anger, especially in relationships, uh, realize that God has given us an aspect of emotion of this anger, but the key is how we control it, how how we manage it, and also to be able to see ourselves in the midst of of the anger that we find ourselves getting angry so that we can, you know, probably stop it and deal with it because we know anger has some negative effects. Sustained anger can bring you know, physical effects upon your body and deteriorate and tear down your body. So we want to encourage you, back from the beginning, the Bible said, be angry but sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. That's the reason why God says that, because God wants you to be in peace. He wants you to have a sound mind. He wants you to, uh, you know, to live and, and grow and develop uh, emotionally and spiritually. And the Bible said, I wish above all things that thou may be in health, even as thy soul prospered. But one of the ways that your soul prospers is just through self-control and through self-care. So don't make anger a part of those things that could tear you down and destroy yourself, destroy your relationship, uh, destroy uh, things that you are building up with. So we we'll just want to encourage you. Thank you, Dr. Dennis, for, for sharing and being on the call. And thank you, Chloe, for your fact check. And you're right in, that, in the movie uh, War of the Roses. Uh, like I said, I'm Pastor Ken Jones. I'm coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Thank you for allowing me to come and, and to share and, and talk about those things that impact you, spirit, soul, and body. Look forward to talking to you next week. So, good night. This has been Life Cycle with your host, Pastor Ken Jones. If you're trying to manage your life cycle, be it with relationships, grief, or marriage, tune in to Pastor Ken Jones' Life Cycle. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.